Good evening, everyone. Thank you for coming. Um, so this is our first time in Japan, and uh, we are very grateful to see many of you here in our meetup. Um, so my name is Loy Liu. I'm a CEO and co-founder of Kaiba Network. So what we do is we build a decentralized exchange for uh, cryptocurrencies and crypto tokens. Okay, so today I'm going to uh, you know uh, explain what is Kyber Network and how we view our decentralized exchange. Um, so in the recent years, uh, we have seen a massive growth of uh, you know, cryptocurrency and, and blockchains, right? So if you look at the uh, total market cap of the, of, of the entire market, you can see that it has been growing exponentially. Um, you know, two years ago, uh, in, in you know, 2015, uh, we have only the five billion market cap. But you know, I think today the to to total market cap is around 400 billion US dollars. Um, and you know, people are expecting you know, uh, you know, trillions of you know market cap in, in the near future. And in terms of the number of coins and number of tokens, I think uh, people are more and uh, you know people are issuing more and more tokens. And Today, I don't think we can keep track of the number of tokens anymore. I think it should be around you know, uh, a few uh, you know, thousand or even more than that. Um, so with this growth, we can also see that uh, people are more active in, in trading. Um, so this is the graph for the daily trading volume. Um, you know, just half a year ago, uh, the, 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 top, the, the daily trading volume is around you know, 100 million US dollars, right? But by the end of the years, uh, we, we see that um, it, it reached something like three billion US dollars per day. So that is a massive growth. Um, so this makes you know crypto cryptocurrency exchanges um, become the holy grail of this entire ecosystem. Uh, so how many of you remember the Malbox hacking? Do you uh, remember how many Bitcoin got stolen? Uh, do, do you uh, remember how many Bitcoin was stolen? Uh, uh, one, uh, one million. One million. Um, one million. Uh, one. one million US dollars? Yeah, yeah, yeah yes. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the number is around 800,000 Bitcoin, uh, which is around you know, 12 million US dollars at the current price. Uh, so basically, Malgox could not explain uh, what happened to that 800,000 Bitcoin. Um, they claimed that they got hacked, but many people, many people accused them of you know, selling the Bitcoin to pay for, for the expenses. But at the end of the day, many people get affected and you know, it crashed the entire market. Um, so you, you see that you know, uh, there's a significant drop. Uh, from 2013 to, uh, to 2014, right? Um, so Malgox is not the only uh, incident. Over the years, we have you know been seeing more and more exchanges getting hacked. Uh, this la last month, we have the coin check hacking. Um, so you already know that 500 millions of US dollars got stolen. Um, so this put a lot of pressure to the regulators uh, to regulate all the exchanges. Uh, it also affected you know, a lot of users. The price of you know, the NAM uh, currency dropped significantly after the, check, uh, the, the, the hacking. Um, so it happened so frequent that uh, some people actually lose faith in these exchanges. Um, you know, it's essentially because these exchanges are centralized. So at the end of the day, the people, the user, they still need to trust you know, a couple of people to protect and, and you know, secure their coins, which is against the, the nature of you know, trustless and decentralized that cryptocurrency and blockchain are advocating. Um, so that's why recently we have seen uh, the rise of decentralized changes, including Kyber. Uh, we also have Omisego, uh, Interdelta, ZeroX project, and also SWAP. I'm not going to explain uh, in detail, uh, you know, how each of the project works, but uh, this is a brief, you know, summary uh, on the difference between all these projects. So, uh, in the first group, we have like Ether Delta, S Swap, and Zero X. Um, so they follow the hybrid model in which uh, you know they have the option order book, 
and uh, the settlement is going to happen on chain or on the smart contract. Um, so with this model, um, the user they will have to trust the website or all the relayers or you know indexers uh, that host the order book of chain. Um, so OmniCircle follows a different uh, you know, design. So what they have is they have their own plasma network, uh, which is separate from the main Ethereum network. And um, with this design, they can uh, you know support higher uh, transaction throughput because essentially they run on a separate chain, right? For Kyber, we run everything on chain. Um, we guarantee the, the liquidity due to our design that I'm going to explain later. Um, the user they do not need to trust anyone because they can you know just interact with the smart contract directly. Uh, but the, the main drawback is that uh, our sc scalability is subjected to uh, you know what Ethereum can offer us. Uh, everyone is following. Uh, do you need like a you know, translation to Japanese? Okay, uh, let's go on. <laughs> right. Um, so what is Cyber Network? Essentially, what we are trying to do is to build a secure and usable uh, decentralized chain. Um, so, what we want to, uh, you know, there are a few other properties that we want to offer. Um, you know, secure, trustless, uh, guaranteed liquidity, so that you know we can settle the trade almost instantly. So, how we, how do we do it? Um, so, first of all, we build everything on chain. That means. Uh, all the operation of Kyber Network runs on our smart contract. The user do not need to trust any other third party uh, apart from the Ethereum network itself. Um, we realize that you know uh, all the hybrid model. Uh, at the end of the day, they still require the user to trust some other uh, you know, third party. So we do not want that. Um, the second thing that we do uh, is that we remove the. Uh, the concept of order book. So in our exchange, we do not have the order book at all. Uh, this is because of two reasons. First of all, having the order book may be complicated for the mainstream users. So if the user do not have any trading background, any technical background, when they see the order book, they don't know what is going on. And secondly, um, storing the order book on chain is going to be difficult for the network. And it's going to be expensive for the users as well because every time they want to trade, they need to send a new transaction uh, to the to the network, and it's going to cost them some money. Um, so what we do is we introduce the concept of reserve, uh, which acts as you know similar to the banks in our real world. So this reserve, uh, they have a lot of coins and tokens, so they are ready uh, to you know do the trade with the users. Um, so we bring them on chain. And what the user sees is that um, the user only see the sell or, or, the, or the buy price from the reserve um, instead of you know seeing the order book. And we have you know mechanism to bring more uh, reserve to our platform, bring them on chain. Uh, we provide all the software, all the tools, so that they can just easily integrate with Kyber Network. And uh, you know. Being a reserve, they can you know actually earn profit from the trading spread. Here you see that there's a difference of two JPY uh, in this uh, you know in between the sell and the buy price. So this is the profit for the reserve. Um, we also work with other uh, wallets providers so that they can integrate Kyber Network in their wallets, so that users can just do the trade uh, on the wallet itself. They don't have like, to go to our website and log in and do the trade. On our website, instead they just you know use the wallet on their mobile phone, and you know after a few clicks they can just you know do the trade. Uh, we have some incentive mechanism to uh, incentivize the wallet to to, to join our platform. Uh, basically, they will share the transaction fees on all the trades that, that they introduce to Kyber Network. Um, so I will explain the architecture uh, by showing how a transaction happens on Kyber Network. So we have the main contract uh, that the user are going to interact with Kyber, and we have the reserve uh, that provide the liquidity in our platform. So when the user wants to convert uh, from token A to token B, what they do is they send a transaction that has uh, token A to our contract. 
a contract, we talk to the reserve, uh, credit the token A to the reserve, get the uh, you know, token B back, uh, the amount of token B is you know, corresponding to the amount of token A and, and the rate that the reserve offer, and we send back you know, token B to the user, and everything happens within one single transaction. Uh, we have other people to, ma to maintain the reserve. Uh, this <coughs> reserve manager is going to uh, you know, do all the rebalancing uh, to, to, the, to the reserve so that they can always you know, offer the trade to the users. And they can also feed the price between token A and token B to the main contract so that the user know, you know what is the rate that they are buying or selling. We also have the uh, you know, operator of the network. Uh, which you know do all the due diligence on what are the tokens that we are going to list, uh, who are the reserve providers. Um, we incentivize you know more and more reserve to join our platform. This is gonna uh, make our price more competitive. Um, essentially, you know when the user want, for example, when the user want to uh, change from Ether to Omega we will talk to all the reserve that support this Ether and Omega token pairs. And we will, bet, uh, we will get the best price uh, and, and offer to the users. Um, so this will make you know all the all the price in fiber network more and more competitive. Uh, so this is our roadmap. We uh, finished our token sale uh, in September last year. Um, so we already launched our uh, platform on mainnet. Uh, for now, it's still in a pilot mode. That means we do not lay open to everyone. We just open to around ten thousand users. But in a week from now, uh, we are going to open to um, you know uh, everyone in the in the uh, in the public. So there are more you know complicated uh, uh, products that we are going to offer by the end of this year or you know early 2019. Um, so this is a quick update on you know the platform development uh, after the token sale. So there are three main components. Uh, this one is a you know wallet uh, that is. That is where the user go and interact uh, with with Kyber Network, do the trade with Kyber Network. Um, so we just want to make it you know so easy for the user to to uh, you know do the exchange with us. The other component is you know all the wallets, uh, sorry, all the smart contract that we have, uh, including the main uh, Kyber contract, uh, the contract for the reserve to maintain and keep the coins. Uh, we also have the operator contract uh, that that is going to uh, run the entire exchange. The other part is uh, you know the reserve dashboard. This is the tool and, and the software for the reserve to, to uh, operate in our platform, uh, so they can you know get all the market view to determine the price. Uh, uh, they, there are all the security measures uh, to protect the reserve so that they do not get uh, depleted, they do not get hacked, um, and we also prepare all the rebalancing uh, algorithm for them as well. Um, so this is you know the user interface uh, for, for Kyber. This is a little bit outdated. Uh, when you go to Kyber Network, you will see a, a, a much nicer interface. But the idea here is you can work directly with your hardware wallet, including treasure and leisure. So your coins never leave your wallet. Uh, but you can still do the exchange with Kyber. We also integrate with uh, you know, other uh, wallet providers, including IAM Token. So I have token is the most popular wallet in, in China. I think they have like more than one million users at the moment and more than three hundred thousand IT users. Um, I can actually show you a, a quick demo of how it works in IAM token. So what is the most popular uh, software wallet that you are using to uh, maintain your coins and tokens? Anyone using uh, Treasure? Anyone using uh, Ledger? Oh, okay. We have uh, four or five ledger users. Anyone using uh, other software wallet? Uh, which wallet are you using? My Ether wallet. <coughs> we are, you know, we are discussing with My Ether wallet uh, to integrate Kyber there. Yeah, but you know, uh, there's no concrete result yet. Um, we also work with other platforms that uh, accept you know, crypto or tokens as as a means of payment. Um, so. Gipto is a live streaming platform. They have more than 20 million active users. Uh, and Upcoin is, is, I think, they are one of the most popular uh, app stores platform. And they, they recently they finished their, their, their token sale. And uh, their user will, uh, can use their Upcoin token 
uh, to you know for enough purchase and you know do all the advertisement uh, and many other uh, you know platform partners. So with you know all this partnership, uh, what we are going to do is uh, you know we can bring Kyber Network to millions of you know users indirectly, uh, and we have them you know uh, conveniently use all the existing platforms without uh, you know the, without having the burden of you know acquiring all the tokens. Uh, we also have some other uh, you know strategic uh, partners, including uh, Blockchain and Berkeley, uh, Enigma. So all these partners are you know helping us on getting more market view, uh, so that for the reserve they can they can do the pricing better. Um, there are a few other partners like you know Icon and OneChain uh, that are going to work with us on you know all the interchain protocol, so that we can do like cross chain trade. Uh, user can trade between Bitcoin and other ERC20 tokens uh, on uh, Kyber network later on. Um, what is this? Oh, yeah. Uh, right. So with this, you know, infrastructure, um, what are the <coughs> applications that we can support on, on Kyber? Uh, of course, the most obvious one is, you know, uh, you know, doing the trading right in a decentralized and trustless way. Um, so here, I will explain the difference between doing a trade on Kyber network and on some other centralized chains. So with a centralized chains, what you uh, usually have to do is to deposit your coin to the exchange. Um, you know, wait for the confirmations, uh, which is going to take at least 10 or 15 minutes. And only after that, you will be able to, you know, uh, do the trade and withdraw the coin. And nowadays, you know, most of the exchanges they will charge you like 10 to 15 dollars to withdraw the coins, right? And as a result, many users just leave their coin on exchanges uh, because they don't want to pay that, that huge amount of fees. Um, so with Kyber Network, what you can do is you can send a transaction uh, to, to Kyber Network and within that single transaction, you can deposit your coin. Uh, we can find the best rate for you, execute the trade, return the coin back to you immediately within one single transaction. And it's going to take like 15 or 20 seconds only uh, with the current block time of Ethereum. So which is much better than, than uh, you know, centralized in this. And we never keep your coins during this execution. So your coins is always with you. Um, another application that um, we can support is uh, you know, the process payment, right? So suppose uh, this merchant only accept Ethereum and you are having holding some other token. Um, so what, what, what can you do? Um, you may go to central agendas, uh, convert this token uh, to Ethereum and pay the merchants. But with Kyber Network, what you can do is you can send the token to Kyber. Uh, we will do the conversion in the background and forward the payment to the merchants. Uh, so, the, so you know, with this, we, we are working as you know Visa or Mastercard uh, that helps you to convert all the currency. Right. Uh, the integration with uh, other decentralized applications. Um, so. More and more people are, you know, creating their own coins, issuing their own tokens. So as you know, the result uh, we are seeing, you know, tens of thousands of new uh, currency and tokens. And each of these, you know, app, they are going to require their own native token in order to, uh, you know, use the platform. So it is really difficult for the users to, you know, who want to, you know, experiment or want to use uh, each of these uh, applications. Uh, because they now have to go to the market and buy all the you know, tens of thousands of tokens, right? So, here is an example. So, if the user want to use this application A, they will have to buy the uh, you know, token A beforehand, right? And what happens if these applications call some other applications? And this application also requires some other token. So, this user will have to prepare both token A and token B here, right? So which is extremely inconvenient for the users. Uh, so with Kyber Network, they can essentially have only Ether, and they can do all the conversion on the fly. So they can just send Ether to Kyber Network, buy token A, send token A to the app, uh, the app will buy token B from Kyber, uh, and forward the token B to some other app. So everything happens within one single transaction, and the users they do not need to have like you know tens of thousands of other tokens, um, which is extremely convenient for them. 
Um, we can also integrate with some other on-chain entities, some other uh, complicated smart contract. For example, here, uh, we, uh, in the future, we can work with Melonport, which is a decentralized fund management platform, uh, so that the, the user can, lead, uh, can, can just like, convert all their payments or you know, liquidate uh, their portfolio with Kyber Network. Uh, and they can also like, do some other, uh, some other complicated uh, you know, financial products, like you know, hashing or you know, future contract. <coughs> I'm not going to uh, the details because it's complicated. Um, okay, so are we done yet? So this is the you know, distribution of, for a trading volume uh, between the token pair status and Ether. And we can see that there is only one candidate for decentralized chains here, which accounts for less than 1% of the trading volume. So that means we still have a lot of work to do. Um, and we realize that there's a you know, main trade-off between decentralized chains and, and centralized chains. Uh, decentralized chains tend to be more secure uh, and trustless due to the uh, nature of you know, blockchain and smart contract. But in order to uh, reach out to the mainstream users, in order to serve the message, um, centralized chains they are doing it better because they are, they are easier to use, uh, they have higher liquidity. So with Kyber Network, uh, we aim to you know, achieve, uh, to, to bridge the gap, right? To, to uh, build, uh, you know, the safer and secure and, and more usable exchange platform for the users. So with that, I uh, want to conclude my presentation. Um, I'm happy to take questions. My name is Chai Kit. I am uh, representing Tracetool.io. Um, Tracetool basically means uh, Trace to Identity Owner. Um, this is uh, how we call ourselves. Um, and we're playing in the KYC, Know Your Customers, at AML, Anti Money Laundering, and Counter Terrorism Financing CTF space. So, uh, what we basically do is that uh, we're a project that has been just been launched um, last month, uh, and we are. Um, in the process of finishing up our ICO uh, and our private round is uh, oversubscribed so uh, public round will be announced uh, tomorrow. So basically, uh, sorry, click here. Yeah. Um, Trace2.io, we, we intend to use uh, blockchain artificial intelligence to basically revolutionize uh, KYC and AML and compliance. Now, uh, my, my background uh, is, um, well, AML KYC is actually a very, very big problem for a lot of people. Uh, it still remains as a problem and it hasn't really been solved uh, by um, even though there, there's a lot of people who try to solve the problem and maybe a lot of them are actually focusing on the small little parts of the problem at the moment. So what we want to do is to be able to uh, try to leverage off uh, certain technologies, we'll explain in a while, and to be able to help uh, the cryptocurrency community uh, a lot better to be able to comply with regulatory requirements. Uh, in, in, in this area, all right? So it's the biggest, one of the biggest problem. Uh, and I'll skip some of these slides because I think we're a little bit short of time, if I understand correctly. So, but by and large, it's an expensive problem. Um, and uh, the likes of uh, 300, you know, uh, 20 uh, uh, billion dollars has been identified as the cost uh, of um, remediations or um, uh, the cost that banks have to pay uh, globally uh, to, uh, make good this problem that they have. Um, uh, and, and therein lies this opportunity, $120 uh, billion uh, for regulatory technology solutions uh, globally to help solve this problem uh, as identified by less stop payment. Um, it's, a, it's a problem uh, that is not just for the banks. So uh, typically we think of anti-money laundering, KYC, AML uh, as something that the banks deals with or the financial institutions, insurance company but uh, that is, has obviously changed. So uh, cryptocurrency startups uh, anywhere in the world, uh, whether it's in Singapore or in uh, uh, Japan for example, uh, like who's doing ICOs, uh, they have started to carry out uh, KYC uh, procedures on their contributors and like for example for Kyber Network, uh, where we have just announced a, a partnership post uh, just today, uh, basically uh, when uh, Trace2.io goes live, um, Carbon Network will be utilizing our service uh, to uh, to carry out KYC on, on the users as well. So so that that has a, a sort of set a new standard um, uh, in the cryptocurrency space uh, quite, uh, quite quite a bit. 
Now, th these are the two functions in terms of uh, DNFVP. These are not, not quite relevant to this conversation, but I'll just briefly mention them. Designated non-financial businesses and professions. This refers to the likes of uh, the lawyers, the accountants, the corporate service providers, real estate agents and, uh, and, and casinos, where uh, globally they are also required to comply with anti-money laundering standards uh, that is set by the international body called Financial Action Task Force, FATF in short. Uh, that like Japan, the likes of Japan, Singapore, Hong Kong, UK, US uh, are all uh, member countries of, of these international uh, non-profit organizations. As well as uh, charities and, and societies are also required to comply with, with anti-money laundering requirements. So the, the problem is not just for the banks. Now, uh, if I could sort of go on uh, very, very briefly, um, I, I, I like to think of this as, um, um, you know, the, the green bar, the, the green line is actually um, um, uh, happiness and uh, effectiveness or efficiency. Typically what we experience is that if um, the regulation goes up, then um, it all gets more complicated. You know, happiness goes down, efficiency goes down. So uh, it's always going to be um, uh, an issue, especially for cryptocurrency startups, where uh, they are also strapped with uh, limited resources, inefficient processes, and therefore on the other side of it, where you potentially will run foul of certain uh, regulations or rules, and uh, it is no wonder why uh, AML uh, KYC is never going to be equal to happiness because it's a pain uh, for a lot of people. So what we try to do really is is to um, uh, be able to uh, build an inclusive KYC uh, utility platform uh, that service uh, that focuses its service on uh, the cryptocurrency uh, community, where basically a B two B business to business uh, outfit. So we basically work with people like Carbon Network as well as other users that uh, uh, business users uh, like the exchanges, the wallets, as well as the ICOs, and we provide this service uh, to them, who in turn will uh, be acquiring the individual users like you and I. Okay, so that, that's one of our, our uh, value proposition, and we basically want to utilize artificial intelligence, machine learning, um, as well as uh, smart contract to basically try to do uh, some of this work for us. Uh, when we want to uh, bridge uh, the gaps between the physical world KYC processes as well as the virtual world KYC processes. And why we want to do that is because uh, we do not believe that, you know, just because, we, uh, like say for example, I am actually using a, 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 a anonymous uh, account on the internet or on the, on the chain, uh, therefore I don't have to comply with uh, the KYC requirement because these requirements are typically uh, enforced upon uh, exchanges, wallets, and even the ICO. So uh, the obligation is always uh, there. Uh, so therefore, we're, we're targeting uh, the, these uh, uh, participants in the ecosystem to, uh, to, to be able to uh, provide that service. Now, um, we service the underserved, uh, meaning that, as I said already, already uh, we, we are at the moment, uh, we have a book of clients in, in the fintech space, the blockchain. So I think earlier on, um, Lloyd mentioned a number of those names um, like Gifto, uh, Request Network, you know, and the likes of uh, Digix and some of these uh, uh, crypto uh, startups are also our cli uh, clients of ours at, uh, as well. So we do believe in uh, promoting regulatory inclusion. So if we, if cryptocurrency, we think if cryptocurrency were to be uh, were to get mass uh, a greater adoption by the masses, then the practices and the regulatory standards will need to come up. Meaning that you know, because you are almost going to be almost providing a form of financial service, you know, whether you are regulated by a regulator who issues you the license or otherwise, uh, the obligation to make sure that your system is free from uh, money laundering abuses, terrorism financing abuses, is is uh, is going to be there anyway. So it's better for us to start this. Uh, um, Revolution, if you like, uh, in the in the right side of the fence, rather than to try to you know do it um, and say, okay, well, I'm not regulated by any regulators in the world, therefore I don't need to check who are using my services, right? So I think that will be that would not be uh, uh, that will not get very far, because regulation will always always catch up. So I won't go through too much detail about what is KYC, uh, but there's a bit of a word there that you can read, but you can find all this in our white paper uh, if you if you go to the website. But maybe a, a simple diagram here would hopefully encapsulate everything. Uh, we, we think, uh, in terms of KYC, it's not just getting your passport, getting your ID, uh, it's not as simple as that. 
So we, we look at uh, this as one part of it, the profile of a person uh, using some uh, uh, algorithms on facial recognitions and potentially video recognition as well. There is a black list of screening that needs to be performed, like your sanction list, your terrorist list, money laundering, suspects, uh, people with negative news, politically exposed persons. So these are some of the things that banks and FIs currently are doing it uh, today. So, uh, and it will need to be done because uh, this is the, 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 the global standard. And uh, uh, there is also a need for, for um, providers to carry out ongoing due diligence on the customers um, as well as to potentially perform transaction monitoring if you're uh, um, uh, providing a service on an exchange. Right? So they'll be in and out, you know, whether it's crypto to crypto or fiat to crypto. So um, that, that needs to be looked at as well. So this, this encapsulates the money laundering, uh, counter-terrorism financing aspect. And, but we think that KYC is actually much broader than that. This is one aspect of it. Um, there are other players in the market that focus on identity management. So you give them, a, a, a upload a copy of your ID, and then they will pay, in turn give you a, a token and say, nah, this is your this is your digital ID and you can do other things with it. But these, uh, most of these players that we come across, they are actually not uh, KYC specialists. So, so I'll explain to you why uh, there's a difference in a minute. Uh, because we, we have the background of compliance, regulations and all audit um, uh, previously. So therefore we are able to level up the KYC uh, standards uh, uh, more holistically than, than a lot of other uh, parties in the market at the moment. Then we look at uh, potentially credit worthiness as one of the forms of, uh, that needs to be carried out for KYC purposes because over time if uh, exchanges and wallets and service providers start to uh, provide more services including loans and you know uh, something to do with collateralizing of cryptocurrencies or, uh, or coins that they, the user may have then you get into the similar financial services type of products that uh, typically may involve uh, credit uh, Worthiness assessments and, 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 and the like. So, so these are some of the areas that potentially there's an expansion in terms of the, the scope of services that we could provide. Um, and so fundamentally, the thing that we're trying to address, the four questions that uh, we want to answer will be uh, encapsulated in, in this slide here. Now, who you are, we've talked about that easy. You know, we, we know who we are, we've got an ID, we've got a driver's license, so we can prove that quite easily. Now the second part is actually who are you not, right? You don't want to be dealing with people who are problematic, you know, in, in the crypto uh, service provider's perspective, because otherwise it creates a lot of problems for, for, for themselves. Um, so that's the who you are not question. Now then the third one is are you still, are you still uh, uh, who you say you are? Meaning that uh, over time, uh, you know, your profile might have changed. You may not be a, a terrorist six months ago. For some reason, you committed a crime and there is a, that you may become a terrorist or you may become a, a money mule, a money launderer and you may get into the negative side of the press. So this, this is an important question that needs to be looked at and, and we want to answer that question as well. And lastly, what did you do? Now this is the transaction monitoring piece. So if you think about uh, controls of, of an exchange or a wallet or even the ICO themselves, you, you need to look at these to say that, okay, I have implemented um, uh, preventive control, right? If you're familiar with control mechanism, internal controls, these are preventive. Something to prevent bad things from happening, you know, in the first place. So you 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 have filtering mechanism to make sure that uh, the the identified uh, bad people don't come into the platform. Then there are detective controls that you need to put in place, which is what did you do? So I hope that you know distilling this down into the four questions will help you. Uh, better understand um, the, the concepts and, and the framework of what Trace2 seeks to do. So uh, a, a quick example of the flow is that if we say you take Kyber as an example, you know if Kyber's 10,000 users uh, comes on board, then you know Kyber will, will, will point these 10,000 users to Trace2's ecosystem, and then they will be vetted um, uh, uh, through the, these four questions that we attempt to answer and Kyber will not store any of the personal identifier information. Neither will trace to, but we validate that, and then after that, uh, we will uh, 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 adopt uh, an encrypted storage mechanism with a multi-sig uh, contract to basically uh, enable uh, the uh, subsequent, you know, uh, uh, if you like, uh, the reviewing of this document, if, if if there's a regulatory uh, inspection or, or request that has come through about this profile. Okay, so, so that, that will be worked upon. Now, um, uh, I won't go into too much detail on this part here because we wanna 
basically utilize a community a ecosystem of trace tool as we say for example Kyber brings in 10,000 users and then there are other exchanges of wallets and ICO that are bringing their respective users so this ecosystem has a multiplier effect of the individual users at the end but we do not um, charge the individual users like you and I because the regulatory obligation to comply with AML KYC standard is always with the service provider that provides you the, 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 the financial service or, or the likes of you know, um, asking you to contribute to their, to their ICOs. So that, 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 uh, we, we want to be able to use some of these, um, uh, the, the community, the end user, to perform some basic social verification task. I haven't worked out the exact details of what needs to be done, but uh, this is the concept of one thing to uh, consider. Whilst most of the time AML KYC is a very centralized function, uh, we want to consider how we can actually broaden this aspect and consider how uh, we can en engage the community to perform some uh, uh, social media verification tasks for us. Right, so and then uh, with the, 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 the trace tool token, uh, they will uh, 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 become like a community verifier and then they can earn tokens as they perform some of these tasks uh, on behalf of the network. Okay? Um, I sort of mentioned this earlier on on the blockchain aspect, we're on Ethereum and uh, we will want to be able to uh, consider various forms of uh, uh, combinations of on-chain, off-chain storage as well as uh, perform, uh, consider whether we could uh, use uh, things like zero-knowledge proof as well as uh, homomorphic encryption technologies to make sure that you know, the, the security of the personal identifier information that has been processed uh, are not being compromised from a security perspective. Uh, incentivizing the, our own ver uh, community verifier, as I explained that earlier on, uh, and make sure that the whole objective of this is that you know, if a person like me, who have uh, a, 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 an account with a few exchanges and participated in a few ICOs, I don't want to do it many, many times. I want to do it one time and there is a reusability uh, of it, uh, element of it that, that uh, benefits the whole ecosystem. Now, um, next is actually around the artificial intelligence portion uh, because we do believe that uh, there is an actual real use case uh, in anti money laundering, counter terrorism financing with artificial intelligence, uh, in particularly around the transaction monitoring piece to identify suspicious patterns of uh, transaction that. Uh, uh, that uh, may give rise to a reporting obligations by the exchange to the financial uh, uh, intelligence unit, for example, right? So that that uh, potentially can be uh, a good use case there. Now, um, this is a high level. This is in the white paper. Uh, basically, we are at the uh, race stage. We've already been uh, oversubscribed, uh, and uh, we are uh, probably going to close around uh, public round uh, in, uh, in April in itself. Okay, so um, the, the roadmap um, just says uh, what we want to do, so again, I won't go into too much detail there, uh, but we're already starting to um, work with uh, uh, partners like Kyber and Endelux to be able to uh, uh, set up our roadmaps uh, for, for the ecosystem. Now, I just want to spend a little bit of time to explain to you who are, what, who are these people. Now, this is me. Uh, I separately run another company, Software as a Service Company, which focuses on regulatory technology softwares. Uh, and we are currently providing uh, AML KYC softwares to uh, about 450 to 500 clients, all B2B around the region, but with a, a number of cryptocurrency ICOs uh, uh, beyond uh, Asia Pacific region. So, Canada, US, uh, uh, Europe, uh, uh, Middle East as well, uh, uh, this is where we, we have uh, gone into. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually the, the, uh, the managing director there as well. So um, I'm, I actually sit on uh, honored to be sitting on Kyber's advisor board. Uh, so uh, when Kyber did the ICO, I was helping them with the, with the AML QIC piece. Uh, so uh, I'm here, and you know, for I'll talk about our, our advisor later on. And uh, I'm also the advisor on this uh, startup called Red Pack Revolution. They intend to build a regulatory technology ecosystem in Asia. Uh, and when I have nothing much to do, I basically teach uh, at uh, an International Compliance Training Academy uh, to teach compliance officer how to be compliance officer. So my background is actually compliance. I've got about 20 years experience in audit. Uh, I used to work in uh, Pricewaterhouse, uh, PwC, 
uh, and uh, uh, after that I, I went into banks uh, for about 15 plus years uh, as the regional head of compliance uh, uh, that looks after 11 countries of compliance uh, matters. So my CTO, uh, Dias, uh, who has got experience in fintech, blockchain, uh, and KYC and credit for about five odd years, and then uh, Jean, who basically focused on um, machine learning and uh, 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 artificial intelligence, and then Dan is uh, marketing, and uh, Robin is actually uh, the other co-founder. But what I would also want to show you is uh, on our board of advisors, uh, Bing Ching, who is actually the chair professor uh, of the Singapore University um, uh, in, in the School of Computing, so he's on my advisor board, uh, and uh, Lloyd. Uh, is also uh, on our advisor board as well as uh, Lee Hong from uh, uh, Carbon Network. Now, uh, Nizam is a regulatory lawyer uh, based in Singapore. He looks after Southeast Asia, so um, he gives us the uh, regulatory side of um, the advice. And I'm not sure whether you, you heard of Simon Kim. Simon Kim is the CEO of Hash, uh, which is actually the, one of the, if not the biggest, uh, cryptocurrency investors in South Korea. Okay, so that's uh, what I have. Uh, I, I think I'm just on time. Yeah? So that, 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 that's us, Tracebook.io. Thank you for your attention.